think about what I left in Virginia. And I call my kin to tell me again you're the happiest you've ever been. Try not to think the whiskey wants to get in you. I reminisce and I start to miss the way you look at me back then. And I know, I know, treats you like a queen. If you come down to Charleston, I'll be a Carolina king. I miss my boy I hope that he had a good Christmas and It's late July And a little late To try to be present With a gift And I know I know Treats you like a queen Come down to Charleston Charleston I'll be a Carolina King Last time I called Your mama said Boy don't you call here You've done her wrong And she's done moved on Then you went and wrote A sad country song And you know Sure as hell no Treats you like a queen But if she goes down to Charleston You'll be a Carolina king Yeah, I know I know Treats you like a queen down to Charleston I'll be a Carolina team Well Welcome to the Conant Show and uh, special guest tonight is Jules Taylor a uh, very fine, accomplished, original musician who's uh, in our area here for some years now. And uh, well, we have we have him for an hour. Thank you guys for having me. Really yeah. appreciate the invite. All right, well. Cool to be here with the high tech stuff going on. Yeah, we're. I had no idea this was in the middle of Woodstock as well. So. Yeah. Well, this is this is a little treasure. This venue, it's a little treasure of Woodstock, and we're breathing life into it tonight with some original content. And uh, I always like to acknowledge uh, Paula Gloria for teching for me. Thank you, Gloria. <laughs> Gloria, <laughs> Paula. Uh, it's kind of tough for me, you know. You got two first names going on there, and it's uh, a <laughs> you know, beautiful names for a beautiful lady. Um, all right, so that was a, a real, real sweet opening there. Thank you. Um, are you still feeling a groove here? Yeah. You... <coughs> yeah, I mean, I'll play you a couple tunes, you know. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're good for it. We're good. All right. Jules Taylor, people.
I've had no peace of mind since you've been gone As you traveled on to see parts of the world You left your luggage and you hitchhiked back Through the rain to my welcome mat so Maybe you deserve to stay outside Cause I watched you walk away so many times Now that you're here, can't help but draw you near It's just like clockwork every time It's just like clockwork every time You came in like a storm with a wind you washed away the boardwalk on the shore You crashed like tidal waves on empty streets And we searched for what we lost along the beach so Maybe you deserve to stay outside Yeah, I was just gonna say I was uh, I was pretty uh, pretty visible spot. There. I was gonna I was gonna go and rob it from the from the field of view, but then I thought, you know, there's something poetic about that. You know, I'll be there. That that. Yeah, I did just wake up too. You know, wife of a musician. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, all right. So, what's really funny, you know, is 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 th th this is the only box I use. Right. Right. You know, yeah. and I'm pretty old school. Uh, 
I, I don't play pedals because I pretty much don't know how. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and then I thought, I thought to myself over the years, you know, I, I, could, I could go there. Um, but then I thought, you know, that's not my thing, though. You know, I, 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 I kind of like being a dinosaur in that way. Right, 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 right. right. You know? Right. Uh, but, um, you know, I, what I want to ask you is, is uh, you know, the evolution of your music, you know, you know, starting out as a kid, you know, I mean, I started out with a, you know, the crappiest little guitar, and, and of course, you know, I had a 12-piece rock band by, you know, 10th grade. Right. Um, how was your how was your evolution? What, what what got you into the technical side of things? Well, I think uh, you know I always wanted to do something with uh, with media, specifically sound, and I was always uh, curious about experimental music and how certain sounds were achieved. And uh, started playing guitar very late in life, considering by comparison, one of my friends started when they were eleven, twelve, and I started when I was seventeen. Right. And uh, so I figured I had a lot of ground to make up, but I wasn't going to be developed in my 20s enough to present a bunch of songs and material that I was proud of. I figured, why not go into engineering? And uh, it happened to be a really cool uh, sort of segue into later musical projects in life. But I moved to Nashville and um, I spent a lot of time there as an engineer. Uh -huh. I learned from a lot of artists uh, in the studio. And, um, you know, the technical side of things just kind of stuck with me because that was my trade. And so I can't really do any of the moving acoustic stuff without, you know, lots of pedals around for different things, you know? Right. And, uh, and also, it's a, you know, there aren't many guys who put their acoustic through an array of effects. No. And um, so I, I kind of, you know, I, I think that there shouldn't be that exception. Um, you can do some really astoundingly creative things with just an acoustic guitar and pedals. Um, yeah. This microphone? Yeah, okay. that's good. Cool. So yeah, I just, um, you know, I came up in engineering because I, I was always curious about how to achieve certain experimental sounds and that just followed me throughout everything and now I'm playing mainly this acoustic guitar and um, I don't want to give up the technology because there's some pretty cool stuff you can do with pedals and an acoustic guitar. Well, that, that's, that was what I was really admiring is, um, it's a, you, you, you know, here's just one man, a guitar, <coughs> his voice and some pedals and it's a, you know, it's a very full and rich sound you got going on. Thank you. And, uh, you know, to me, that, that's, it, it's almost as much work to tastefully use your pedals, well, it is probably, mm -hmm. as it is to compose a song and play it on your guitar. Right, right. And, uh, you know, got a thought about that. Well, you know, it's, it's less is always more, and sometimes it can get really soupy. I have certain songs where... You know, I kind of, for as much discipline as I have around trying to, what I think, tastefully use effects, um, there are a couple songs that I play during my solo gigs where I kind of forget all those barriers and just go all out and do some of that. Yeah. You know, so it can get really soupy really fast, um, especially with the looper, you know, I'm playing things and layering things, and I try not to layer too deep because then it starts to sound kind of artificial. Right. But if I can you know, retain the organic sort of acoustic sound with some of the effects over the top. I think it's a, I like to think I can get a, a nice balance there. No, you have, you've you really achieved a really uh, kind of a pretty unique sound. Now, you know, we are uh, local access TV and we are the Hudson Valley, uh, uh, um, uh, Woodstock, and uh, you are a local performer and, and this is this is where my whole interest is is I'm all about live and we're going out live right now and uh, I like um, to promote live because we have so much in media we have so much you know social media we have so much you know I, I, I run the movie theater so there's there's I get to see that kind of media uh, but but you know, a, a person putting themselves out there like we are, you know, Paul always reminds me that, it's, you know, you're doing a brave thing going in front of the camera. Right. You know, this is right. a brave thing for, you know, anybody. And, you know, I have to sort of swallow a certain bit of nerves every time I, you know, Wednesday. Oh, man, Wednesday's here. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, you know, so I like to promote live. And do you have some gigs coming up that you could share? I do, actually. Um, actually, tomorrow night I will be in uh, New Windsor, New York. 
at Schlesinger's Steakhouse. Uh, they have an entertainment industry mixer down there and uh, a bunch of, you know, film professionals, musicians, uh, music producers, uh, guys come out and mingle and network a bit. And I am a featured artist there tomorrow right. night around 8 p.m. in New Windsor, New York. And Saturday night, I'll be in Saugerties at kind of the regular place where I perform. Uh, it's called Bella Luna. It's right there on Partition Street. And, um, you know, Chris and the gang down at Bella Luna have been so kind to me uh, since they opened that restaurant. And upstairs, they have a nice little wine bar uh, called the Twilight Lounge. And uh, so they've invited me multiple times to play there. And uh, I seem to have a good rapport with those folks. And, just, you know. Uh, about how many gigs have you done there at Bella Luna now? I've done five or six, actually. And um, I do have some of my live stuff off at uh, julestaylor.bandcamp.com. There's uh, nine or so tracks that I recorded live at Bella Luna that I have up there. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Right on. So um, you can also follow me on Facebook at Jules Taylor Music um, to find out when I'm performing, where I'll be. I got a couple gigs booked in September already. And, um, but I'm winding up August and July was a really busy month. I think I had 12 gigs in, in July. Um, you know, I've always been really torn between like, am I gonna make country music as a songwriter or am I just gonna rock out and, you know, play rock and roll? So it's kind of a duality that I, I, I waffle back and forth on. And uh, my solo stuff is mainly, uh, you know, some people have said that it's like, Texas country with Nashville soul. And, uh -huh. um, and the rock and roll stuff is just like a bomb going off because I, I do like to use all these pedals with electric guitars and create lots of huge distortion sounds and things like that. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I haven't really heard your music until right now. Oh. So it's very fresh on my ear. Gotcha. You know, and I would say that, you know, what I'm feeling is, is that you're playing your own thing. And that's that to me is really refreshing. You know, uh, I, I like your chord changes. They're they're not complicated, but they're very direct and pure. You know what I'm saying? Is that, does you. that make thank sense you. to you? Yeah, thank you. Uh, they're they're direct. They're pure. They're they're not uh, they're not confusing or you know overcomplicated. And and I, I don't I you know I was not that I was trying to peg your genre or anything, right. but uh, I, I was trying to peg your genre, uh -huh. and I can't. Oh, so, that's you know, a good thing, though. You know, and I, and I, I want you to know that. I think, I think you got a real real nice original Thank you. sound going on. You know, I, you know I, I heard some of the influences that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, like, I have a kind of a funny story uh, uh, regarding that, you know, music and your identity. Right. Right. And uh, I, well, my first rock and roll band was uh, I joined a band. We called ourselves the Jesse Crab Band. And, you know, m my compatriots there, they were really big into Southern rock. And at the time it was, you know, Leonard Skinner, sure. the Allman Brothers, sure, yeah. and all those guys, you know, and they, they emulated that. Um, and I was coming from the Beatles and, and Jeff Beck. Right. And, right. And, and uh, you know, fusion jazz. Um, not that I could play it. <laughs> but that was my ambition. And uh, I, I always kind of thought it funny that, you know, I'm, I'm you know, with a, a Jewish cowboy, an Italian drummer, and then myself from the suburbs of New York City, nice. and, and we're, we're playing Sweet Home Alabama. Right, right. You know, and, and uh, so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, that was why ultimately, you know, I left and went on to my own little project it was because I felt as suburban boys from outskirts of New York City, we should be expressing that. Yeah, you know, and that exactly. Was, it was so interesting that that was such a passionate, you know, fight. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. For seventeen-year-olds to right, have. Right. Right. But you know, but now you know, I still, I still identify with that. You know, you be who we we are. Or you know, my another one of my heroes, Frank Zappa. You are what you is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, know? It was like uh, you know, Miles Davis said something, which I, which I absolutely love the quote. Uh, said, man, sometimes it takes a really long time for you to sound like yourself. And, uh, you know, I, that's one thing I try and, you know, some, at times whenever I find up and coming artists or artists who are still kind of struggling to find their sound, um, I always try and encourage them to kind of look further inward than they already are and try to determine who they are as a musician, as an identity, as a, as a sound. Yeah. And it takes a long time to flesh that stuff out, you know? 
and um, and and then you, you you know you'll be developing it for decades, and at times you'll just have these like epiphanies where, you know, like one of the first projects I ever started was something called Ethan Monday, and I really wanted the sound to be uh, kind of synthesizers layered with acoustic guitars. Yeah, is kind of the sound that I was going for, and that was when I was like 20, you know, and I'm 32 now, and um, I've been doing the solo show for about a year. And about six months into doing these solo shows with all these pedals, I realized, I was like, man, you know, I'm trying to write this country music stuff that, like, sounds really kind of Texas or really Southern. But there was still, like, these not-so-organic tones that I was finding over things. But then I realized that still harkens back to this first project that I started out with the original thought of, like, the acoustic guitars and synthesizers. Yeah. So it's kind of funny how things work out and recapitulate in, in, in a way, you know? So, um... Yeah, I just so. So let me ask you this: Do you have any tunes of, of your own that are like have a real Texas stomp to it, or anything like that, or? Uh, you know, like a Texas stomp kind of thing. Actually, I just wrote a song recently called "The Long Road to Abilene," um, and I started trying to do this dobro effect over uh, my guitar with a lap steel slide. Ah. And uh, I'll play that for you if you want. Cool. All right, Jules Taylor, people. pedal set, so. Driving by my lonesome No one here will call me by my name Cause I went west when I left Tulsa Cause the bridge over the Red River's in flames And Amarillo's not the place I need to be New Mexico ain't that far away but I'll be traveling back down Highway 20 East I took the long way to Abilene Yeah, I took the long way to Abilene I don't trust a broken arrow Most of them are just too bent to aim You can load them in your crossbow But you know that arrow just don't fly the same Now Amarillo's not the place I need to be New Mexico, it ain't that far away And I'll be traveling down Highway 20 East I took the long way to Abilene Yeah, I took the long way to Abilene Yeah, I took the long way
not the place I need to be New Mexico ain't that far away But I'll be traveling back down Highway 20 East I took the long way to Abilene Yeah, I took the long way to Abilene interesting uh, thoughts that that has been presented to me recently is the idea that um, you know Woodstock and the local region around here is is if not actually having a renaissance with music and you know the creative side of it com com compositionally and, and performance you know live performance um, you know you're like young blood you know and 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 and, and you're helping make that happen. Uh, you know, I know uh, for those, uh, I, uh, Rob and Joni over there at, at Logstock, and I, I know you don't know the, the, right. the place, gotcha. but it's, a, it's almost across the street from here. It's a big log kind of mansion. Nice. And uh, I'm not sure what their relationship to the music industry was, but it's significant. You know, Sweet. They're, they're, and, and I had a lovely conversation with Rob about, you know, making you know, this a happening scene again. You know, the Joyous Lake uh, may come back. I've, un I, you know, uh, he was excited at that idea. Um, We're all eagerly anticipating the reopening of the colony. At, yes, and the colony is, is being renovated and uh, uh, the Howards are really uh, putting a lot of love and care into that and uh, keeping carpenters employed. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, um, do you feel this energy building here? I mean, is, is, or I do, I do. You know, there's a real tangible energy uh, in this area. And, you know, it, it, for many reasons, you know, I mean, not just the festival so many years ago, but, you know, it's, I've gotten more done musically in the Hudson Valley than I feel like I ever got done in Nashville, even though it's obviously like more concentrated in Nashville. And I moved up here from there. So I moved up here thinking that it was going to be an issue to not have enough musician friends or to not have the outreach or the resources to create, you know, I mean, I was totally naive about the area too, but I got up here and I was completely proven wrong. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, there are several great musicians that live up here. Um, and I certainly feel a renaissance, not just in Woodstock, but in Saugerties as well. I mean, uh, in Saugerties you have bands like uh, the beautiful, I don't know if you'd say, Bastards on the air, but they're called Beautiful Bastards. And okay. There's, there's also Lost Aesthetic. Uh, there's my band, El Yeah. Um, there's also Ian Flanagan, uh, who is a, a tremendous songwriter in his own right, one of my best friends. And um, so just in like Saugerties, you know, there's in Gutter Cat as well, which is another group of great musicians, the Paul Luke Band. Um, you know, there are so many great musicians in this area that and songwriters for that matter as well that um, and that's just kind of the company that I keep with other musicians and songwriters and because uh, you know as a songwriter you 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 tend to put yourself in other people's shoes a lot in order to write or you therapeutically write as much as it is a uh, a creation of art it's also therapeutic in a way um, but yes I do feel that sort of renaissance happening you feel it looks like electricity in the air and when you hang out with these people that I just mentioned, they feel it too. And so we're all just trying to get people to come out and watch the sort of art that's being created in this area. Yeah. So, and, and I try and do what I can in order to, you know, like I try and, if I, get, if I get an evening at a venue, I try and bring in other local bands to open up or to get the word out for them. I also host an open mic night every second Friday of the month at a place called Rock the Casbah. And there are some singers. Rock the Casbah? Rock the Casbah is the name open of the restaurant. Mic? 
open mic every second Friday in Saudi's right on the corner of Main and Partition. And there's some notable musicians that kind of started out of there. Uh, Katie Marie Hofstadter. Uh, there was Logan Callahan as well. Um, his album is about to come out as well. Um, and uh, there's another band out of Saturdays as well called For No One, who's traditionally like a metal outfit. And they don't even have a vocalist. It's just like instrumental metal. Uh -huh. But they came into Rock Casbah and did an acoustic gig, and they, it was very well received. And now they're playing out as an acoustic trio, playing the same metal material, but it, it sounds very Phrygian, very exotic, jazzy. And the guy plays a, uh, he plays what's called a cajon. Okay, and, uh, yeah, I know right, so he plays a cajon with them, right? But he does this really interesting thing where he puts mittens on and then he, um, in the pocket of his mittens that come up, he duct tapes uh, shakers into his hands. So that way, as he's sitting in the cajon, the egg shakers are keeping percussion as well. And uh, why the mittens with shakers built in is not a musical product you can buy at Guitar Center or something like that, I don't know. But I thought it was a brilliant idea. So... Well, well, someone just may rob that idea now. Someone might, exactly, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm asking, please, somebody do it, you know? Yeah, so, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I played a few gigs with Michelle Molnar, who, who had uh, visited the region from Nashville. I know and, Michelle, uh, yeah. Yeah, and she, she uh, got involved with uh, my entourage over at the movie theater. Nice. Because you know, I have a Sunday morning jam. Cool. Uh, five years now, every Sunday morning, I, awesome. I show up either by myself or I've had 10 people at a time and, and some really heavy players, uh, uh, Al, Alan uh, Murphy, Sweet. Uh, um, among other uh, uh, really fabulous players. And, um, but we, for, for a time, I, I actually had a, a giggable band, you know, about five pieces. And she did a couple of gigs with us. So I got to, I got to really appreciate her talents as a songwriter, singer-songwriter. Uh, but I, it was really neat to listen to her about Nashville being like boot camp. Yeah. And that it, it was not an easy scene. No, it's not. Uh, yeah. and, and, and kind of a brutal scene in, 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 a, in a number of ways, socially, uh, economically, and, yeah. and, and musically. Um, she said the one good thing about it is that it, it really pushed her uh, songwriting. Mm, yeah. You know, even though it's formulaic, I mean that there can't are can't be a slouch around those parts. No, you man. can't be a slouch no. around those no. parts. That's yeah. right. Um, you know, uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Any anything to? I don't, I don't know that I ever really would would have developed as an artist unless I had left Nashville because uh, you know I was already on the engineering scene and I had some I worked on some really great albums down there that had a lot of accolades on them and and it was you know I've been a successful engineer. It's like. You can't just go to your engineer buddies and just say like, hey, uh, I want to be a music artist now. It's kind of like undoing the bulk of most of your efforts, you know? Yeah. So having left Nashville um, and, you know, with big rooms closing down, the sad state of the music industry as it is, and a lot of studios are just going out of business or can't keep the lights on or can't afford to keep the consoles plugged in, things like that. Uh, there's been this home recording uh, sort of renaissance that's happened over these years. And, uh, and that has its pros and cons. But... Um, you know, having left Nashville and not immediately gotten a job in a big room up here, I started, you know, turning inwards as far as like, what is the art that I wanted to create? You know, I've always written songs. I've written for other artists. I've, it's just what I've done. And uh -huh. um, so it, it, it allowed me the opportunity to focus and develop uh, the songs that I now feel confident in presenting. And, and it's a new thing to have material that I absolutely have a desire to communicate, you know. When you're writing songs, you may, let's, just as an example, you may have written a hundred songs, but you only play the last five that you wrote kind of thing, you know. Um, and even if you show someone your songs, you may not be showing them your, your top drawer songs, you know, the ones that you're kind of holding on to for right. you know, publishing or something like that. Um, but yeah, Nashville is a, it's a brutal place, man. You know, I mean, you go out to lunch on a Tuesday afternoon and if there's a cover band playing, it's the best cover band you've ever seen in your life. And they're just playing for tips. And they got like an eight-piece band with a horn section. And if they're just playing for tips at a local burrito place, and they're the best you've ever heard. Imagine what's on Broadway on a Saturday night kind of thing. I mean, you have, you know, Robert's Western World down there where you find guys that are just, you know, wailing on a telly and they'll switch off and go to a lap steal. And the, 
musicianship is just incredible. Guys like standing on their own stand up basses and playing wow. and stuff in the middle of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so, so Nashville, it's, it's really a magical place. I mean, it's, it's great to, to branch out with, uh, you know, other, other up and coming musicians. And, uh, and, you know, it was cool working at a music store in Nashville. So I got to meet everybody, you know. Uh. And then I kind of I was managing like a lot of the guitars and recording sections at the Sam Ash there. And uh, so, you know, two of my friends later went on to be in uh, a band called the Chris Weaver Band, and they're touring South America right now, and they just, uh, I think for like the third year in a row, they uh, won uh, an award from Music Row or some organization saying they were the best uh, independent country act uh, in Nashville. Uh, so, you know, it's cool to go down there and meet everyone, and you never know who you're talking to either. Like, I spent a lot of time drinking at this bar called Foo Bar that was across the street from my house. Ah. And uh, I'd had conversations with this one guy a few times. And then afterwards I realized who he was and he was the, uh, the son, he was the grandson of Jerry Reed. Jerry Reed. The Grand Ole Opry guy, you know? Oh. Right, and then his father was the bass player for Johnny Cash and Dwight Yoakam. Uh, yeah. And here's, he's just the guy that I was talking to at the bar, and he's a regular session musician. And, uh, you know, so you really don't know who you're talking to in Nashville. I mean, you have guys like uh, uh, Vince Gill will just show up at a, at a pro jam session, kind of like Helsinki has up here yeah. at a place called 12th and Lindsay. And that's how those guys practice. They just go to open jams and sit there and play music. You know, it's, it's in here in the Hudson Valley, a, a sort of a similar thing because, you know, we are you know, really just a hop, skip, and a jump from New York City. Right, yeah. And, and in between here in New York City is a lot of little towns and a lot of venues. And, uh, you know, uh, I can't remember if it was in the 80s or the 90s, um, but I just happened on a Monday night to go into a place in Piermont, New York called uh, The Turning Point. Sweet. And sat down next to Les Paul and had a beer with him. Whoa! Whoa. And Les Paul is a, is a very, very particular, important person in the music industry for a lot of reasons. You know, the, uh, <clears throat> you know, this, this little uh, Gibson Epiphone reissue. Right. Here is a uh, classic kind of a, a Les Paul design going back to, I think, the 40s or 50s. I don't and, remember what year, yeah, but... But, but, you know, to have my, you know, 40 minutes of hanging out and talking to a legend and hearing him play, you know, with his arm pinned in place, his, at, at, at this point in his life as, as an old man, he, his elbow was, was pinned. And, really? And, and, yeah, so he, he, he suffered every Monday night. Um, it, was, it was quite painful for him to play, but he, he gifted these audiences, you know, his brilliance. Wow. You know, and, and, and uh, uh, and it was just, it was, you know, I was, I felt like I was really having a, a, a gift, you know, from, from, a, 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 of a, a real genius. That's amazing. And, and I, I just want to report folks that Mr. Les Paul was probably the sweetest most gentle, lovely human being I've ever met. What a what a, what a kind and uh, you know uh, and uh, That's awesome. thoughtful. Wow. I mean, he, he was he he he's a, he's an individual who really cared about our world and 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 his place in it. And he was so humble, you know. And and um, yeah, you know, he did a lot in the recording world too. I mean, well, the... he, he had uh, everything to do with multi-track recording. Exactly. And, yeah. You know, echo effects and things of this nature. Um, yeah, uh, tracking. And I saw Mary Ford's SG on eBay recently for something like, something like two hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Maybe it was half a mile. Remember, it was something outrageous. But that yeah. three uh, humbucker, white Gibson SG. Yeah. With the Bigsby or Whammy Arm or whatever it was back in those days. Um, yeah. Now, less less has been a big inspiration to me. You know, it's it's a shame that I. I always wanted to love a Les Paul guitar, but I, I just, you know, tellers are what do it for me. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I look at the Les Paul recording series guitars and I, I think of all the dials and switches on those and I, 
you know, part of me really wants one of those. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. you either love guitars or you don't, and certain ones call your name and certain ones don't call it at all, and you don't really choose them as much as they choose you. And that's how, you know, it's kind of funny you say that because I, I got this at the flea market in Woodstock last summer, um, and I wasn't even looking for a new guitar. I, I, my, my real guitar that is a 63 Gibson Firebird. Awesome. And, you know, it screams. Yeah. And that guitar I've had since 1975. Mm. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, would you like to... Uh, you, want, you, want, you got another one to spin out at us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we got we got 15 minutes left. Kind of want to play you guys a uh, one of the soupier songs that I do.
being that uh, you're on my show, right, 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 you, you've just carried the whole show and, and uh, really done some amazing things here. Thank you. Uh, could I ask you to lay down something maybe in E minor? Sure. And uh, I'll play over top with you. This sure, is yeah. Let me tune up here. Uh, completely unrehearsed. And this is what this is what jamming is. creative process, you know, when it's un, uh, unfiltered. go that's that's some live jam there on the conan show that's the first live jam on the conan show just so you know jules right cool and um, so as musicians speaking to the world you know 
if we want to change gears here for the last few minutes, sure. you know, what kind of um, concerns, you know, that vex us as human beings? I mean, we, you know, it's like I know what I think about all day. I think about, you know, uh, justice in in our in 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 our global sense but also then there's you know there's the there's the the real root of your life you know and and I'm just wondering you know is there you know my thing has always been Native Americans you know it's kind of been my focus uh, for a variety right, of reasons right. and uh, so you know I'll, I'll often like like right now there's a struggle to stop a pipeline uh, going through the Standing Rock Indian Reservation or, or transiting near it transiting near it uh, and there's thousands of uh, Indians out there. As there are, I think they're up to about uh, 2,000 uh, resisting the pipeline and going up Good. against state Good. troopers. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and their concern is that the, uh, it's at the upper reaches of the Missouri River, I think. Um, you know, again, my geography is bad, folks, and, and uh, this is just really off the top of my head in the last few minutes here, as a concern for the water of their people and water is a big concern here, you know, Cooper Lake and uh, Nestle and, you know, shipping our water out of ultimately our aquifer uh, it has been a, a uh, serious issue in our community. And, uh, and now that you are part of our community here, what, what, what's, what's, what may is, uh, what, what's lit you up? I'm really proud of the scene in Kingston hosting all the Black Lives Matters, uh, uh, you know, sort of, um, the gatherings around when, uh, you know, those the killings happened recently, two days in a row. Uh, I was really proud of the community in Kingston for coming together and having a vigil and marching all the way down to the police station. Wow, um, I did not know this. Yeah, I'm, I'm astoundingly proud of that. I was actually really proud as well of all the Bernie Sanders supporters, um, you know, that, that were hosting uh, fundraising events for him. Um, you know, there's a pretty heavy political scene. Um, you know, also the visuals that were held at the uh, Kingston LGBTQA oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Center down there. I know the center, um, yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, social justice, the more I write music, the more it becomes, you know, something that I, you know, if I wasn't like writing songs, if I wasn't uh, trying to make my living as a musician, if I wasn't doing things that I was doing, I, I could see social justice in those causes being a real, Call the action and a real inspiration uh, that I might try and take more of an active part in, you know. Um, but uh, you know, and I watch a lot of the news because I, I I want to. It's like an exercise in empathy, basically, is what that is to me. You know? uh, yeah, and empathy is uh, very uh, essential to our ability to have a community, exactly, as a species or as just a you know as a local. Uh, thing, so we're we're we, we're on the two minute call here, okay. and uh, I would really like it if you would uh, share with our audience one more time where you're playing tomorrow okay. night. I'm playing tomorrow night in uh, New Windsor, New York, at a place called Schlesinger State House. I believe it's a five dollar uh, admittance, and um, I'm a featured artist down there, and it's an entertainment industry mixer, so you don't even you know, nobody knows who's going to show up at these things. Um, a lot of industry pros, I hope. Um, and then Saturday night, I'm playing the Saturdays at Bella Luna upstairs. They usually get started about 9 o'clock. That's when the music starts. Um, and you can follow me on Facebook at Jules Taylor Music. And uh, basically just anywhere on the web, Jules Taylor Music, you can find me. And, uh, you know, other than that, I'm just happy to be writing songs and happy to be doing what I'm doing. And I'm happy people like it. I'm happy it's well received. And, uh, you know, come out to my show if you saw me on public access here. Uh, let me know, you know, so. Uh, yeah, the, we, l we would love your feedback. If you enjoy our show, uh, uh, please uh, let, let us know. Um, also, at Upstate Films, uh, we do live venue, and uh, I'm inviting you to uh, do a concert. I would love to. All right, so we're going to, we'll have to uh, arrange that with the powers that be, and we will right. let you all know. Sounds good, awesome. All right. So we'll uh, jam out on something on the way out? <laughs>